fuck, 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 fuck. Yeah, there we go. Oh, no, Lotus, no, we just started. You did the countdown. You didn't hear him? Yeah. N- no, I didn't. No. Oh, well, <laughs> we're start. We're already started. There's we're no in it now. now. Now we're in it. Yeah, welcome. Don't be rude. Let him start it. <laughs> he already did, dude. You don't. You didn't hear him? All right, we'll quit our acting. No, it's all good. No more <laughs> countdowns. We are in. The, I know you're a good actor, but we are in the mix in the Van Flip podcast. I am joined by Travis and Lil Lotus from the band If I Should Die. Nope. If I Die First. I don't know why. If I Should wow. Die was a local band. That was if a local band die, here. Signing off. That was a local I, band here. I like here. that. I like that alternate, actually. Yeah. You can, I don't know if you can use it. Like I said, it, I think it was a local <laughs> band here. He's going to, he's like trademarking it immediately. <laughs> well, going back to your acting comment, Travis. I did see you in a little. You had shorter hair at the time, but you were in a little, uh, a little commercial for the Mini Cooper there, doing some darkness uh, vocals. Yeah, I did this commercial a long time ago. Um, I uh, was in a Mini Cooper commercial, and uh, I had to go to all these callbacks and castings. And uh, I was driving a scooter back in the day. They were like, "Do you have a license to drive this car <laughs> in the commercial?" And I said, "Absolutely." And did you no have way one? I had a license. Yeah, okay. I did not have a license. They're like, do you know how to drive a stick shift? And I said, well, of course. And it was, I did not know how to drive a stick shift. Um, so uh, I just bullshitted my way through that 100%. Well, uh, you, just to, you know. There's an old adage, and it rings true in every sense, every sense of the word, and every category could be made uh, apparent would be fake it till you make it. And, you know, you did yep. the damn thing. That's what I did, you know, and uh, they were like, you're doing good. And I was like, really, am I? Uh, maybe it's the Adderall. I don't know. And then, uh, <laughs> and then they were like, and then they were like, and then I was like, all right, well, um, if, uh, if I can do good doing commercials and stuff, maybe I can go back to music. <laughs> there you go. So I, I went and opened a music venue. Yeah. Um, I, I abandoned acting. I said, no more acting. I'm going back into music. I grew my hair out. Um, and, uh, I opened 1720 in LA. Yeah, I was so. that, that that might be a good starting point. Let, let let's uh let's cascade well, that into a starting point. 1720. I mean, you know, you know Lotus is an actor too. Oh, are you? I did not know that you oh, were an actor. I, I, I just knew I knew never... that I knew that he had his other projects and other like, you know, hip hop and pop or R&B styled projects. So I knew that he was multifaceted, but I didn't know you were into acting. I don't know if it's possible. I am multi- where I am I'm very multi-flaccid. Uh, multi-flaccid? He's multi-flaccid. <laughs> I'm multi- I am very multi-flaccid. Um, it's the I condom video. Where are the condoms? The con- no condoms in this house. All right. This Never. is what I want. If there's an edit, if there's a way to edit this show, and then edit <laughs> in Lotus's acting. Can we do that? I can drop it in the video. What is the... Uh, what, what is... The, were you an actor? Bro? We got you. We got you. We'll send, yeah, we're yeah, going to uh, send it to you after this. You're okay. going to see some shit. Okay, cool. Yeah. cool. We're going to send it to you. You're going to edit it into this video, and then we're going to come out of it, and we're going to, and it's going to be like, ha, that was great. <laughs> All right, cut two in three, two, one. That was awesome. Okay. That, that was a great, that was so a great little clip. Sick. Oh my so God. You got to Look see at Lotus that. acting, and that, I mean, wow. as you can see, he's top tier. That's top notch. Yeah. You're, I mean, yeah. I don't, Leonardo he, has nothing on. I don't know how yeah. we have him here right now. I, I, he must be in so much demand with all that skill. So, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. He's got an agent now. Oh, that's awesome. Well, so let's go. <laughs> <As> with, agent. <laughs> let's go back to the music. Not the music. The new music venue. Um, you got. You were in. You are still in from first to last, right? Yeah. yeah. Even though everything's been on hold for like a while, but um, yeah. you're currently still doing that. You're doing this project, but well, we're more talking about this project. If I die first. And the venue would be a good starting point, I think, right? That's like kind of almost the birthplace of. Yeah, it it is a sense of, it at least is the birthplace for wh- uh, where I come in with the band. Um, we built the venue and then we started throwing a lot of like ham on everything parties, which is a big, uh, cool underground brand out here. And um, and he just started throwing a lot of these like little um, underground shows with a bunch of local oh, artists. Like bridge, regular one. Had to be what like. It was like Ned, he would play all the time. I think Zubin came in for a couple spots. 
Lotus came in for a couple performances. So I just was able to kind of uh, meet meet all the guys um, at the venue, you know, a couple of years before we started jamming together. But uh, but as far as how the band band came together, um, they've definitely known each other for a while. They've all worked with each other. They've all been like, you know, building plans out to make a band. And, uh, and it's really cool. I really love my role in the band because I get to be like uh, – like that next father, generation who's helping out your father guys. time. Yeah. And so I saw them being like, we want to make a screamo band. And, uh, they sent me their first demo and, uh, and it had some kind of like program drums they were messing with and stuff. And, and I just heard it and I was like, yo, give me these stems. Let me do the thing to it. And I did this thing to it that made it sound like a literal band was playing, like it was a real band. And then we were like, yeah, this is it. This is what we, this is what we want to do is make a band. And then I was like, yo, Ned, if you, you got to put me in the band. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm, you gotta, I want in. Like, whoever you need to kick out, you got to go do it because we're going to go make this EP, you know? Um, no, I'm just kidding. They're all homies. I just kind of, Lotus, do you remember how I got in the band? Yeah, I mean, from my perspective, it was, like, me and Ned had been talking about, like, doing, like, band-type songs, like, but still, like, produced by Ned, Ned Art type shit. And we had been, like, trying stuff, and then finally, I guess, like, him and, like, Zubin, like, worked together, and Nolan on a song, and they sent it to me, and that's, that night I sent back my vocals, and I left them open for Zubin. And that's how Needles became, that's how Needles became a song in, like, one night. I just like sent it back and forth. Yeah, it must be like really easy with, with all you guys being like producers because Travis, you've done some production work and in my quick research of you guys, like half the band is producers, right? Correct. Yeah. I, 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 no, incorrect. I cannot produce. I <laughs> but you hate should, producing. Lotus I hate is going to be buttons. a producer when he's 50. I'm, no, I'm going to throw the Kanye in the mix and I'm going to be the fucking Kanye and executive produce things. I'll tell you where, where things go, but don't... Group. Do not ask me to press a button because I will fucking press delete. <laughs> but I'm telling you, it's a new school thing for a producer to be pressing buttons. Yeah. It's I just can't. I can't. Rick Ru Rick Rubin ain't pressing buttons. No, yeah. He's like he's DJ Khaled. I know style. how I know how yeah. it should sound. I when I hear it in my head, I'm like, it needs to sound like this. And I'm like, dude, da boop 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 boop. And then they're like, okay, like let me try and make that. I'm like, no, you did it wrong. But it's like I have, there's no way, I, I can't do it with my hands. My hands don't work. I, yeah, I, I like can you're feel not that pain. trying to use the computer all day long. Yeah, I can feel yeah. that pain. I mean, I also dabbled in music production as well. Um, and it is a pain, especially when whatever's in your head does not yeah. computate out into the actual Yeah, um, I'm also program. just, I feel like I'm too ADD to like deal with that shit. Like I'm just I constantly, just, okay, this was cool for five minutes. What's next? Yeah. Or ADHD. What I don't know which, however, which one it is that I. You're like a creative, that, you you're a creative for, You're a really strong creative force in the band, though. I am a creative fart. Yeah, you write a lot, and it's like, uh, and it's like producing. Ha that term has just come to mean so many different things mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. in the in the modern era. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very much so. Sure. So, when did you d decide that uh, Lotus that you wanted to kind of do band type songs like and when you decided that were you always listening to music similar to like that screamo sound that you guys have i mean i know you linked up with con well, that that's the scene i came from okay like, i i came from like like uh i don't know if you're like you know who third string, produ third string productions is but like i used to like go and sell like pre-sales for my band to play at some like at this venue it's the same venue every single fucking the door dallas before they fucking killed the bitch and then like we used to play there all the time with like all of our other friends sons of herman hall and text i'm from texas so in, like deep Ellum is like all i ever fucking played so i come from that world and then you know really what everybody that is fucking idiot calls emo rap which isn't emo rap emo rap is not emo kids rapping it's rappers that are being emo that's right. what emo rap is right you know people have it completely switched so it's like None of us are emo rappers. We just fucking make songs that we would listen to based off the influences that we had from when we were growing up. Right. And those, that's all like fucking, it'll go all the way from fucking 
the almost starting line all the way to fucking like bring me the horizon uh that um uh, what was it called uh uh count your blessings mm-hmm. that EP, that album you know like it goes all that's the whole spectrum like that whole fucking crazy like you got five stages that fucking warp tour and like that's where like our inspiration comes from uh, or not our but my inspiration comes from to where i'm just like i want to do all my fucking favorite shit mm-hmm. you know yeah were you ever well, it was like a melting so pot? It was it was never like a it was never like a transition. It was just like, oh, here we go again. Yeah. Like it's it took another 10 years for this fucking dumbass generation to realize, like, oh, what we were doing 10 years ago was cool. Like, yeah. <laughs> you have to you have it's to also like, read a, it's also like read, read a fucking book. It's kind of like stressful having a band a little bit. And I thought like no these, way. all these DJs were killing it, making all this money. And so you saw this influx of solo artists come up. You know, and it's just like, hey, yeah. it's a lot easier for me to just deal with myself and and have this. But the, there's an obvious uh, influence with real band music, yeah. and even in just straight up modern rap. Right. You know what I'm saying? So but even like, those like those samples weren't even accessible the way they yeah. are now. So it's like you got kids that can sit in their room and make some fucking never shout, never shout, never type like vibe on the song. That's like, oh, I did it all myself. Yeah, but we have all these samples now that you can like fucking like plug all these plugins that you can fucking go and do like pre pro with and then whatever that's, turn it into a huge song. That's what I think is cool about if I die first is uh is that it came out of from people who came from bands who've been not doing a band for a bit. Yeah, so they're like, yo, we want to make a band now because that's where we come from. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. But yeah. no one was yeah. really doing no one was really doing it. Everyone was just doing the solo artist thing. It's kind of, it's kind of strange yeah. that we're all cuz again, like we all came from I I I'm about your age, Travis. I think you're a little older than me, not by Oh, much. you're 108? Yeah, I'm 107. Cool. I'm 107. Okay. So again, not as old, but mm-hmm. I also came from like the hardcore metalcore background too, and then it got stagnant for me for a little while like after being in it for so many years. And I then feel it. I did go the DJ route too. So I, uh, you know, I went, you know, I did that rabbit hole and everything like that. And then a couple of years ago, I pulled back out and here we are again. So it's weird that, you know, most of the people in your band had the same experience because I don't know. And I don't know if necessarily like there was a lull in music in general for our scene, so to speak, but I feel you like. You don't know? I mean, I didn't pay attention to it in that time period. <laughs> Yeah, I think it was just like the times, you know, like computer was money, like you know, everyone was just kind of like not tr- jumping on the trend, but it was just like really fun for everyone to be having uh like a more doing more of a solo approach, you know. Mm-hmm. Um and it's still, I mean, it that's still obviously a smarter move than starting a band. <laughs> Splitting money five like, ways gotta, or one way. Split all our money a hundred ways. Let's yeah. do this. Yeah. Um, but uh, well, if anyone but knows I do that. Think that, that's that's a huge reason why this band is special. Is like you were saying because everyone is just kind of like putting their powers together, um, and making this other sound. But uh, but yeah, man, I don't even know what I'm saying. I hit that pin too hard. <laughs> Where am up. I? Gassed up. No, it's uh. Whoa, it's am cool. I doing an interview right now? Oh my god! No, man, no, we're on just a phone call. All right. Uh, but yeah, you you mentioned like it is kind of like a super group. You you guys do have a lot of like decently known people, you know, in the group. And uh, Lotus, you said you were from Texas. What brought you over to California? Was it just to do music in general, or did you just like hitchhike out there? I heard all the porn stars out here. That's true too. The vivid building off the one hundred and one. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I came out here. Uh, the way I came out here was because, like, me and Smart Death, me and Smart Death, we're supposed to make like an EP together. And then little Aaron was like, "Oh, I want to be on it." And both of us just happened to be staying at little Aaron's, and I was a huge fan of him. He was a huge fan of me, and we were just like, at some point, we have to meet up. But we just we were here at the same time, and then I visited every week for like another month and i just fucking ended up with dating some porn star out here and we moved in with i moved in with her and fucking did the whole shit bang is that situation that is that a situation you're still in no oh, okay <laughs> i didn't know you know 
You, get, you have to live a little bit of a rock star life, right? I, I've got tons of situations. It's just not, it's not one of them. That's great cool. person, great girl. I'm and, happy for her. And, uh, it's probably you, been a number of years. When did you move out here, Lotus? What year was it? Or I'm not there. I'm I don't, I don't like really recognize the year. How many days? What vibe? I've been out, I've been out here for 5,764 days. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Do the math quick, Travis. No, I really don't know. It was some year. It was, was some year a handful was... of years ago. <laughs> Ned would know. Ned, Ned's really good with the years. Yeah, he's got. He's good with numbers. He That's remembers cool. them. Yeah, he's one yeah. of those numbers guys. He remembers I'm fretboard really... numbers. Really. Just remember, I I count everything in grams. <laughs> oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. 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 Understandable, understandable. Yeah, it has to weigh something. Yeah, yeah. Everything it's, does weigh it's something. It's a, it's a zip a clock. It's a kilo a clock. <laughs> it's a pillow thirty. There it is. I'm learning a lot of new no. slang on this on this episode. <laughs> what um, so how did you guys link up with CU Space Cowboy and Connie and then from North Carolina? Uh, not North Carolina, but North California. Are they from North California? Ah, I just happen to have. The cream of the crop. Here. I think they're from San Diego. It's uh, left. That right. could be. Yeah, oh, you're right. right. And right, I think right, she right, moved right, right. to San Francisco. Here goes Connie. Okay. What's the question? I was asking. I was asking Lotus how you guys hook, how you guys managed to connect. Uh, I think like hornyism. H- hornyism. Yeah, <laughs> one definitely the, the beginning. I think it was like. Like as as depressing as it is, I think it was like a Twitter DM being like, "Yo, yeah, that was you and Ned. Yeah. No, that was me and you too, because me and oh. Ned was an Instagram DM. Me and you when we're on Twitter, and you're like, I'm about to move back to LA, and I'm like, oh shit, let's kick it. That was right when I broke up my fiance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we met. That's uh, a horny DM. We met on uh, New Year's Eve, the first time. Yeah, that's what, yeah, that's yeah. What. And then from like then on, it's just been like a beautiful friendship. It's so like New Year's did Eve we do of last three, year. Did we do a three-way kiss on New Year's I'm Eve? I'm pretty sure, yeah, you, me, and Chloe had, like, a three-way kiss on New Year's Eve. Like, yeah, like, that's we how were, it would be. It was, like, instant, like, fucking connection. I don't know. I mean, that's how it's been with, like, every fool, like, in If I First. It's just, like, homies before the band started and, like, even, like, more and more and more homies, like, as the band has, like, gone on. Right. And you guys, uh, you guys. Emerging in the world. <laughs> yeah, for real. And you guys uh, shot a video and released a video together uh, with your split that you guys uh, put out, I think, like, what, a month ago or a little over a month ago? Uh, uh, yes, yeah. sir. I, I'm, I'm well, it's dropping grams, tonight. I don't, I don't know what that's Connie grams. also measures in grams. I don't know what that is in grams. Yeah. <laughs> 30, 30 grams? I don't know. What, 30 days, 30 <laughs> grams. But, uh, yeah, yeah, we did. We definitely did do that. That was cool. Um I I think the person who shot your uh, shot your video was actually from our little scene here in, in Jacksonville. So, yeah, uh, yeah, Cameron, Cameron, I mean, Cameron, yeah, yeah, Cameron. Yeah, the, the man, the man is a, a, a fucking genius. Like we we shot all of our music videos with them, and when I came to him, because like I did like I did like the whole visual creative director work for like the entire split. So when I came to him with like my idea, I'm like, this is what I'm doing for this release. He was just like, boom, got it. We're going to build the set and we're going to fucking shoot it. And like, he, the, the man is a fucking master of his craft. Yeah, he's, he's been doing got, a lot of it. And we got to beat the hell out of each other for it. It was fun. Yeah. Yeah, it was a great video. He, and he's done a lot of good work. I mean, he's worked with a lot of other groups too. And he's, since moving out yeah. to LA, he's been getting, uh, you know, getting at it. So kudos to Cameron. Um, yeah. Yeah. So Travis, what you got a moon pie over there? I saw you sneak them out. Oh, you were seeing me sneak a moon pie. I can see all the cameras, but oh, you might I not be able to. Whoever was talking. <laughs> oh, my bad. No, nope. I'll share my moon pies with y'all out there. So you're in Georgia tonight? Yeah, I'm in Georgia. Uh, I'm just over here drinking sweet tea and eating moon pies. That's a hell of a time. Yeah. Is it a full? Is it a full moon right now? Or not uh, right now, but today? It, it is with me and tonight. you all the time. It's a blue moon. I was gonna say it is. A, it's a it's a full it's a full moon pie for at least Travis. At least for right now, he hasn't taken a bite yet. We gotta bring back mooning when we tour. Yeah, I love mooning. I mooned my grandma. Who did I moon? My grandma. Or, I mooned somebody recently. Yeah, there's just family. nothing more great than a just random ass on a, a wind like a you know a mirror or whatever. What yeah. is that called? A window. Yeah. <laughs> Are you? you know, it's a- crazy. Every time you moon someone, you never get a thank you card. That's what is true. up with that? That's true. Rude. We you should you should start that trend. 
you know? Well, you have yeah. to get someone to moon you first, I guess, but. I showed you my ass, please. At least say uh, Please you. listen to my music. Send, please, yeah, please stream me. <laughs> so you guys have something dropping. That's drop a good in. marketing team. So you guys have something dropping tonight. However, this episode won't release probably for like three or four weeks. So. Oh, wow. Wait, what do we have dropping really tonight? What? What's dropping tonight? I don't know, but we can, we the can, split, we can the talk The whole split's dropping tonight? The 14th is um, tomorrow. Today's the 14th? Yeah. No, tomorrow. Is tonight it Friday? Is technically the 14th, right? Yeah, yeah, you're right. So this should tell you exactly when it, when, a, when it's a.m., is it us? Yes, Wait, am it's I out. Still on? Video is coming. It's, it's about to be out over video's there. Back. Like, in a, like an hour and a half. Yeah. And that's Was gonna, my video off that whole time? No, just for no. a quick second. Uh, but is this uh, the, uh, the, sp- the full split? Yes, comes out tonight. Nice. So it'll have been yeah. out for at least a couple weeks by the time everyone hears this. So, um, is it a like how many songs? Uh, are I on guess this we could we could skip the line. <laughs> well, I'll do. It. I'll I'll say it. The split is five songs. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's six. Both... No, it's not. It's not six. We both... No, it's five. We both did two. Oh, the split. Oh, I'm talking yeah, about the we, EP. My bad, my bad, my bad. Yeah, we did. We both did two uh, original songs, and then we did the clap song. So that's five songs on the split. Nice. So you guys have a, yeah, the entire, what, like 20-piece band put together because you guys all have a lot of people in each band, and then you did separate songs. In different separate songs. And uh, If I Die First, we tuned down the C. Um, because that's uh, C Space Cowboys tuning. Mm-hmm. So we tuned down to C for our two songs. Uh, normally, we're just drop D, like standard, you know. Well, that's two different things, but, you know. Yeah. It's standard in our line of, in our genres. It's standard not to be in standard. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah you got it. We get it. Um, yeah. I dig drop C. Um, I, I hate drop C. Yeah, Lotus isn't a fan. Is it because of your it vocals? I, I, well, I just have like a fucking eunuch vocal. So, like, is it eunuch or Munich? The eunuch is like someone with no private parts, right? I think, yeah. That's yeah, eunuch. so that's my vocal. Okay. <laughs> so I, I think you did good I, on these two songs. Yeah, but that's, I also want to retract everything again. Nah, it's too late. It's coming out tonight. Oh, not those. I'm talking about, I'm talking about, oh, wait. Yeah, I'm done. Never mind. Ignore what I said. We're gonna get the we're gonna get to the second EP. I just feel it. We're gonna get That's to the about to become a conversation. Yeah. Well, wait. I think you want to go there, Travis. So let's just go there. I don't actually want to because I like the mystery. Mm. Well, you're a very mysterious band. You haven't even played. I, you guys haven't even played a show yet, and you're on the Lamb Goat podcast. I mean, come on. That's tight, right? Yeah. Hey, thanks. Thanks for having us, by the way. Oh, it's my pleasure, man. I mean. You've been around. You've been around doing some things for a couple of years, as long as I can remember, right? I mean, you did the from first to last thing. You did. uh, um, He's been in a human abstract. Yeah, human abstract. Yeah. And then you know, my partner, my business partner at the venue is the drummer in the human abstract. Okay, cool. So you still have that kind of connection and relationship. Yeah, the human abstract still talks like uh, fairly frequently. I, I think we would love to put out new music, but uh, it you know that sound or this that style is very like hard and laborsome to make, mm-hmm. you know. And everyone has like full lives now. But uh, yeah, me and Brett, we work um, every day together on the venue, and then um, we have a third partner um, who is Alex, and he is the guitar player in a band called Necro Goblicon. Oh yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. Actually, um, you should reach out for me. I, hey, you know I can, I can make that connect. <laughs> He's actually right now in Tallahassee finishing up their next record with uh, Jason Sukoff. Oh, cool. I'm actually yeah. not that far from there. I'm, uh, I'm North Florida myself, Jacksonville right now. Oh, okay, yeah. You're, you're right in that neck of the woods. I'm in Albany, Georgia, so I'm only a couple hours away from you also. Yeah, that's cool. Well, yeah. you said sweet tea. I didn't think you were out on the West Coast, so. Yeah, no, uh, but yeah. I will be having some sweet tea on the West Coast, yeah. no doubt. Bring it, you yeah, got to yeah. bring it with you. So how yeah. do you, how do you guys... Burberry King. <laughs> How do you guys like have all these interests and all these different kind of sounds? Because you've been in bands, like every band's been completely different. You've done like grindcore all the way up to like, I think what every album on From First to Last, right? You were in like on every production that they did. Yeah, I was on every production. 
um it just the very the last record we did um before we started doing the new songs with sunny Mm -hmm. and stuff or actually no we put out dead trees on sumerian but the record uh thrown to the wolves i i like left the band before that record came out but I did all the pre-production and I, I worked on it. So it's like, I feel, I'm like, yeah, I worked on every FFTL album, you know, but, uh, but yeah, that was the only one that I kind of, um, we were like, the band was like dying dude. And like, no one really fucked with us anymore. And, uh, and it was just like, uh, it felt like it was just like internally consuming itself you know i i left the band and then uh and then they uh it officially ended for a a long time for like like a couple months after Mm -hmm. i left and that made me happy i was like (laughs) yeah that's right you mother scratchers you better uh respect the amount of uh uh, glue i brought to this band right (laughs) some david Um, lee roth stuff right yeah exactly right um no but uh I forgot what we were talking about. All right, you yeah, just, you're of, all over. <laughs> How does it all come together? Um, yeah, you're all I over. Your your, cool your genres about, are all over, man. Your your band genres I, I, I are all over. I think what's cool about If I Die First, um, as far as our sound and how we all or like, I have a bunch of different sounds, um, is that um, we all agree that it needs to be screamo. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. No, we, I feel like, like, we like, I feel like the, the best of it, it being in this world. You know, I, for me, like uh, from first to last was very experimental. Like, you know, people there's people who are like only like in love with Dear Diary, mm, you yeah, know, yeah. and a lot of our peers thought that we should have just kept making Dear Diary over and over. Um, that was a I big really that was a big record, though, too. I mean, that was a huge record. It was and- huge. And I, and I really wish we would have, in a sense, no regrets, um, because, you know, I look up to bands, you know, like punk bands and, you know, like uh bands that have always sounded the same you know what i'm saying right. like i as a fan i just you know i love mxpx yeah i love watching their live streams and it's like mxpx was mxpx and they always made mxpx songs and they sounded like mxpx and that was that you know what i'm saying and i i for me personally i get to a little bit of that with if i die first because when we all come together we kind of share this sense of like um where we want the sound to go right is that because you guys you you have so many other projects that you guys can actually like not in a in a negative way but pigeonhole yourself to that particular genre maybe a little bit of a maybe a little bit of a limitation i think also well ned ned has a lot to do too with the sound um of course because he's writing a lot of the songs i think that out of all the songs we've written, there's only been one that we didn't finish. Mm, mm. Am I right? No, we came back and finished it and it became like our favorite. The three, four song. Um, the three, four song. Isn't that, uh, I'll never let them hurt you. No, no. That's the one that we ended up, uh, uh there's one that, that I passed hated. it over to the homie. Oh yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. That's only yes. one song. There was yes. one, there was like, a few songs where I was like, I fucking hate this song. I don't want to do it. Like, I can't do it. Like, I can't write on this. And then three months later, or two, two months, maybe a month or two later, everybody's like, hey, listen to this song. And I was like, yo, this is sick. And I just immediately wrote <laughs> it. Yeah. And everybody like, do, y'all were like, do you remember when you were fucking bitching about how you hated this song? No. I was I don't. like, no, I never did that. Hey, that's like, good. Yeah, you did. It's Short- not that song. Short term memory is and good. And it became for that. my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love that thing you and Ned have with like passing songs back and forth and getting yeah. like, just right and like you me, both me and Ned are it. like musically twins. Yeah, that, I, that's what I'm saying. Like there is a little bit, even though you don't feel it from my perception. Uh, just the fact that it, you know Ned has these chords that he loves, and he loves the kind of music he loves. It's real specific. Yeah. What he loves. Um, that really like it it funnels into the band having this like sound you know um yeah it's always good it, it, you know this is just coming from me you know what i'm saying as like a 40 year old the older dude like, in the band <laughs> yeah i've been in a bunch of stuff i i think it's a, it's a cool thing that we have speaking you know? of speaking of being the older dude in the band lotus when you were growing up and like you know being influenced by you know music and stuff 
I'm assuming from first to last had to be in rotation when, you know, when Dear Diary probably was, you know, in rotation in the early 2000s for you, right? Never heard of him. Yeah. I think most people haven't, so I don't think yeah. you're alone with it. With no, I definitely was a huge. I, oh, you want to hear a funny story? Of course. I had this like little girlfriend that was like, "Do you know this band?" I was like, "Yeah, like, I love this band. Like, this band's fire." He's like, "Yeah, like I'm really good friends with their vocalist." And I was talking to, to Travis about it, and like, fucking Sonny was like young. Sonny's like, Sonny's my age, right? He's like, "What? Oh, we're air him out right now." Uh, <laughs> he's no, about my he, age, right? No, I mean, he was he's definitely in, young he's in then. The dirty thirties. We was like 14 or oh, something he's like that older when, he joined, than me. when he joined the band, right? Oh, this is true. So he was probably, this is probably when he was about like 16. And like, I had this like, I would always dated like older girls in our school. And then like, she was like, I'm friends with this guy. And like, he's in this band. And I was like, I know that band. Like, I love that band. But she would never invite me to shows. Like, she would never invite me to like come hang out there to the show. And I was like, well, I'm not going to go because like, whatever. And then oh, I was going to hit it. I'm hit it. So then, like, she would come come back to school and have, like, these, like, digital photos and her little digital, like, MySpace camera. Right, right. Back and it was, day. like, her and Sonny. And I was like, yo, do you ever know this chick? And he was like, Sonny was with, like, all kinds of girls. I have no idea. And Travis <laughs> was like, Sonny was all, with all kinds of girls. I, I don't know who the fuck that is. So anyway. But I, I definitely had Emily on repeat. That was, like, probably my favorite little tool boy song that I would be like, to every girl in high school, like this is our song. <laughs> you helped, I mean, look how much you helped out, Travis. You were getting Lotus laid at such a young age. Travis made me come. Travis that. made me come so many times. You're welcome. You're welcome. So how was it? Like how was it for you being like like a you know again like a fan when you were younger to like now you're in a band with him. The funny thing, and not to like downgrade it, is that like. Like I, we already like the way we even met in general was just because we were playing shows like at his venue, mm -hmm. you know, and that's how we all like, he was like, oh, I see these guys like tons of times, so, like their music's cool, whatever. But we never like him and Ned had more of a connection. Me and him never really like talk talk the way that we do now because the way that me and Travis are now is just, like big brother little brother type situation. Mm -hmm. And so it's like it it was like really crazy for a second but then i was like this guy's a doofus like me i was like yeah. we can fucking have fun and now we just are just idiots together yeah it's that we, thing. Vibe so, on, we vibe on this like know. brother level yeah yeah more on so it's more like, on it's level like, it's kind of how you could you know it's, it's like been, neanderthal level everyone's on the same page yeah. it's not like no one's it's smarter like, than Lodis, the other one Lodis, you shouldn't jump off that second story balcony and try to do a backflip but like don't you think that would be a really funny video? Like, that's our relationship. Flash 2, being loaded into an ambulance, probably, because you, you yeah. got, got talked like, into dude, doing it. The ambulance is driving away. You're like, we'll remember this year now. <laughs> like, yeah. like, it's not funny now, yeah. but it will be funny. Yeah. What song did so I mix the year the a while back? Oh, you did mix. It was me and uh, Zubin. Was that a Ned beat? Oh, no, you did. Bullet acoustic song of yours. It was Bullet. It was one of the Bullet songs. From me and yeah, uh, Ned's EP, Bullet. And that was before I even met Travis. Like, like no, yeah, I, I was met mixing from them a little bit. I met him at, at the venue like a few times, but it was very touch and go. Very yeah, touch. Yeah, we would like, little, you know, say little like, go. Yeah, Travis yeah. Was, Travis was very touch and very little go. Yeah. But it was, and then that's how I met him. And then, uh, just like bugging Ned, like, hey, Ned, you gotta let me hang out with that Travis guy. I really liked his band back in the day. <laughs> me and we Ned, just, yeah, we just, we Ned just started recording Zubin. together and it was, went yeah. off. Yeah. Me, me and Zet, me and, uh, Ned and Zubin were already working a bit together. I'd be like, uh, mixing their vocals or mastering a track or something. Um, and then, uh, and then, yeah, me, me and Lotus, we didn't really start messing with each other until I'd, like, joined the band, you know? Yeah, that's really it. But, yeah, we had seen each other a bit before then, um, you know, and I'd worked with them on tracks and stuff in the background, kind of in the shadows. Yeah. I weaved all this together, you know what I'm saying? Master I, plan. Like, in, this I was his master awesome. plan. And he's like, I got all these SoundCloud guys. I need, I need to get them together and kind of do something with it. Yeah, my business partner is just like, there's these crowds. They don't want to drink. 
they just they just want to smoke weed you know or like you know do you know whatever and it's like no i have a plan i need these guys i need to do these shows right. you know I'm, I'm i'm cooking something together i'm setting I a trap that, i'm setting but, a uh, trap so who programmed the drum who, hey lotus who programmed those like drums on the first song you sent me when it was like that was that was dove oh it was doves yeah yeah I was just curious. I thought it was maybe Ned. Were you going to shit on them? No. Show the quality of it? Is that what you're going to do? No, no. I was just curious. Like, it, it was just more of a program sound, and I did a, a real drum. I programmed all the drums in the first EP. Um, yeah. That's yeah, okay. and I actually, you know, I kind of, I programmed the drums on everything we do because we like to do the vocals first. And then we'll go back and record the drums and do the guitars once we get the vocals locked into the demo. So I'll go ahead and just program everything. And then Derek will jump in and kind of like uh, change stuff around and make it his own kind of craziness. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, lo- I love uh, I love programming drums. I love, I, love pretend- I, love pro- I love pretending I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm a fake drummer. <laughs> as long as you, uh, you know, put the right amount of swing into the programming is fine, you know, because you don't want those robots. Yeah, yeah, I have fun with it. I really do. I feel like, you know, I just sit there and I, I think I'm like some kind of death metal drummer. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, making it happen for the screamo. So do you guys but, like uh, record, do you guys record vocals first and like build a song around that? Or is it like, do you come with an idea or is there a song? No, we, have. we have. So we have. We, we have this. I've got our system nailed down. So what Break happens down. is Ned, Ned comes up with this guitar part, and we're like, yeah, it sounds cool. Or he'll be showing us something, and I'm like, okay, like, yeah, you need to finish that out and like build off of it. Send it to Travis. He sends it to Travis. Travis does the whole like programming so that I have an idea vocally of where we're going with the song. Then the song completely changes once it doesn't change, but like the whole energy changes when Travis adds the programming for drums. Then I go and I fucking I write the lyrics. Me and Trap, me and um, Zubin go back and forth, and we're writing lyrics. We write the whole thing. We first vo- focus on uh, melodies, and then we make the words fit, and we do all that shit. Mm-hmm. Then we send it back. Him and Travis, uh, or Travis and Derek, get the whole drum thing, and then Derek just goes stupid on drums, and then it just changes the whole fucking shit. And then the lyrics are already set in stone, and we just that yeah, we're done with the song. Yeah, Derek. So it's like the, it's like a whole wish washing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which makes the drums like crazier because it's like yeah. when you have a drummer that's following vocals, like that's like way harder than following. Like, it's, it's almost all, like it, a lead guitar at that point. It's crazy. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it just takes the cake, and so yeah. that's our little room. like formula. That's how we do it. And then sometimes there's a little exceptions to the rule where, like, um. There's a song on the new EP where Zubin just like wrote it on acoustic, and we're like, "Fuck you!" Like this is, has to go on the sh- on yeah. the the If I Die First EP. And he's like, he wrote it for it. We were just like, "This is so fucking good!" Like, "Fuck you!" So then we went and did it, and turned it into a crazy song, and it, we're just like obsessed with it. And so it's like there's a lot of cool things to look forward to on the new uh, EP. Um, shout out Zubin, um, but yeah, sometimes. And I think that was one of the songs that I was like, yo, this song sucks. Like, I can't do it. Like, I'm, I'm not going to be able to write anything. And Zubin takes it home. He's like, oh, I got it. And he does it. And I'm like, oh, shit. And then I'm able to write shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, you like made the, you made the perfect hook for it. So now I hear the song completely different, like with right. Yeah, it's always a bonus when you have, so. like, the ability to have that in your on your team or your camp or whatever to have someone who's also either as creative or more creative than you. I mean, when you have six divas on one team, that's a bonus. When you have one, you got a lot to look out for. It. You need at least six divas on your team. Yeah. Well, it's like Bridezilla. It's like, well, I guess we'll see yeah. how you guys are at shows. Because, uh, again, you haven't played shows. But you guys are announced for Furnace Fest. Well, are Fest. you coming to fucking Furnace Fest? I'll be there. Are you really? Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm for sure we'll that's be cool. there. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we would, will all meet then. It would be a then. sin if you didn't. No, want to no. split an Airbnb? We okay. should get him fucked up. I, it wouldn't be the first time I have been fucked up, and it's not going to be the last either. So, yeah, but I think honestly, it would be crazy. 
Oh, it definitely will be. This, I want to see this dude chug a pint and then fucking throw a pint across the bar. Yo, every day I get these notifications on my phone, and it's like Ned just like sending thousands of dollars through PayPal. And I don't know why I see it. <laughs> I know why. It's like, yo, but what? I don't have his email up. He's using the yeah. that first email. Is he? For right, his got it. Um, so, yeah, speaking of Furnace Fest, that's the. Cut uh, that out, actually. Cut that part out. <laughs> <laughs> so you can edit. You can edit, right? I, a little bit. I can, yeah. I just, no, just bleep it. Yeah, we'll ble- I'll oh, bleep, yeah, it. I'll bleep, bleep it. it. I'll bleep it. Yeah, yeah. Bleep out any yeah. any sensitive info, like my social security but number. But also, there should be a part where, like, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to say it. And then you just bleep every single <laughs> word I say. So people are like, what did Lotus say? It was too bad. We couldn't even allow it to be off on Lamb Goat's podcast. It was that yeah. bad. Yeah, that's bad. Yeah. <laughs> so Furnace Fest. Let's go back to that really quick. Um is that the first show that you guys will be playing? You're scheduled to play at least? It's the first as of now. Show. Uh, it's the first announced as of now. Like that's all we Okay. So everything has say. yeah, that's it's announced. But um do have you been telling the young cats like about Furnace Fest? Because I know that it's been like it's been quite some time since they've thrown a Furnace Fest. And uh it was even I think it even stopped before I was even able to actually start going to like out of town shows. Right. I think the surprising thing is that like since this whole like fuck this word but emo rap shit has like fucking started, a lot of kids are just like, oh I want to hear what that sample comes from. And they're like, oh I like that music. This and that. So there's oh even if like people don't know what like Furnace Fest is, like they're seeing the lineup and I think there's a lot of fucking like hyped people yeah. about it. You know it's gonna be because mixed it's, of like, old heads and new heads. This, this, yeah, this heads, is yeah. going to be the Furnace Fest. This is going to be the Furnace Fest where it's, like, so many people that are, like, I was just trying to see my fucking, one of my favorite bands because so-and-so sampled it, mm-hmm. this song. And I listened to the whole fucking shit. And, like, you know, like it's going to be a good fucking blend, which also means a lot of people are going to get hurt. But... <laughs> especially after been being pent up for so long. <laughs> yeah, especially after that. It's like, oh, you can't punch the... The like, the government you can't punch the government. Right. The closest <laughs> thing to me. Um. So what bands are you in? Like, what bands are you really looking forward to? I'll go with Lotus first. So I, I want to see what the young the younger generation is looking forward to seeing. Well, let me pull up my handy dandy lineup. So I'm really like stoked about Thursday. Okay. Um. Yeah, Thursday's gonna be stupid. Under Oath, of course. Um. Emery, uh, from Autumn to Ashes, Gideon. Uh, oh, this is Haste the Day. Of, no, this is Haste the Day. Um, this is one stupid band named Us Faith Cowboy. <laughs> and then um, there is Terror Thursday. Then Day Two. Amberlynn is one of my favorite fucking bands. Mm-hmm. Um, better off, they're hell sick. The Blood Cartel. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward sick. to the Blood too. I'm, that's one that I'm really looking yeah. forward to. Evergreen Terrace. Um, that's tight. Evergreen Terrace. Uh, Further seems forever. <laughs> forever. Uh, Mayday Parade. I'm a fucking simp sometimes. Misery Signals. Mineral. Poison the Well, SKSK, Shy Halud. I'm really excited for Shy Halud. Um, yeah, you, seem, you seemed well, well, well uh, schooled in the old school bands, Lotus. I, I have to give you credit for that. So they don't they don't pay me for nothing, baby. I've, I got you, Travis. Which ones are you looking forward to? Because you you know you're a little older, and I know you've you probably played with some of these bands anyway. So. Yeah, I'm just I'm really looking forward to seeing a bunch of bands I've known for a while. You know, we used to play tons of shows with like He is Legend. Oh, I love uh, that fucking band, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like uh they were like we toured with them almost more than any band. And every time I die, that's another band. I fucking love that band. Too. Um and then, you know, for Mom Nashes, that was the very first tour, uh like real tour FFTL ever went on was for Mom Dashes, um, Cave In. Oh wow. Uh and every time I die. And it was Cave In a long time ago. Um which was nice. We're talking um, like early 2000s for you, right? Yeah. 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 Had their uh, 
the original bass player who was the singer old man gloom mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. caleb I, th I think his name um and uh he passed you know right, right but uh yeah he was that it was a good that was a, just a really sick uh memory i had with like a first tour but um yeah just you know there's a lot of under under oath it'll be cool to see those dudes um a lot of those people we just came up with in florida mm -hmm. um evergreen terrace they used to record at the same uh little studio in valdosta georgia oh, i know we what was it what was the name of that it's like a bird bird sound bird yeah. sound recording uh yeah. lee dice runs that place yeah mm -hmm. um and what's interesting about that is uh um spencer and under oath was Wait, I, have to, I have to i have to pee real quick i'm gonna have connie take over while i'm gone boom tight tag in tag um, out spencer and under oath he uh was in a band called this runs through Yep. And they recorded a long time ago in about off the week because he was just like known for being the like place hardcore bands could go. Yeah. No, I um, definitely remember that. I definitely remember uh, that studio and uh, and all of that, especially because of Evergreen Terrace. And they're, you know, they're a local band here. So. Yeah, for sure. Wait, oh, yeah, you're in Jacksonville, of course. Yeah. yeah. Actually, Jason hit me up today on Instagram and he was like, hey, man, I was going through and I, I thought I saw you at a neighborhood shop here and I poked my head in and yelled, Hey, what's up, man? And the guy turned around and I was like, "Never mind, I don't know who you are. So you know, I was like, that's fucking hilarious, dude. Yeah. That's, that's hilarious. That's funny. Ja yeah. Jacksonville. Did you ever go to like shows at Murray, Murray Hill theater? Yeah. I would have probably saw you guys though at the Imperial. I probably have saw okay. you guys there, especially if you played with evergreen or he is legend or anything like that. So yeah. Yeah, we. Uh, I was just thinking of like real old shows, like crazy old, like a long time ago. Yeah, no, I actually don't live far from any of those venues, Murray Hill and all those. I mean, is it still there, Murray Hill? Yeah, the theater. Yeah, I mean, uh, Connie actually, she she was one of the artists that we actually had come over to my house and do the podcast pre-pandemic. Oh, that's yeah, crazy. we did. Yeah. I sat in and sat in your living room and drink a, a Red's Wicked, and we talked for like forty minutes. <laughs> it was longer than that, but uh, yeah. You, did you realize? Have you realized it's like one of the most popular uh, podcasts we did on our YouTube channel? No, I did not know that. That's kind of that's, that's very up. interesting. <laughs> yeah, no, it's definitely uh, it's that's the most viewed one. Yeah, so k kudos to that, Connie. That's kind of crazy. I didn't know that many people would be interested in me. Oh, a lot. Yeah, it's the most commented, <laughs> most uh, you know, is everything. Even more so, than, <laughs> even more so than you reacting to the comments about your band <laughs> yeah bring, bring back anonymous comments i there's, I'm so st I stand by it there's going to be some sort of new commenting system that might allow anonymous comments on the next uh redesign which hey. should be launching soon so. i backed that yeah so. lamb goat needs anonymous comments yeah <laughs> we need them back they were the funniest fucking things i've ever seen sometimes it's it crazy hilarious some bands love it other bands absolutely hate it and then like cancel yeah. lamb goat you know what i mean they don't want anything to do with yeah. lamb goat. okay i'm gonna give it back to lotus though all right thanks connie back, later. To, back to lotus now back to lotus Ooh. but yeah travis what's your Swapping your it's off in your guts <laughs> what's your favorite lamb goat oh, moment favorite since lamb you've been there you've been going for so long where it's a lamb goat yeah Lamb, what's my favorite lamb goat moment? Oh, they said I was gone for so long. No, no, no. You were fine. Uh, my favorite lamb goat moment of all time? Uh, I don't know. That's a really hard one. Probably any time they would ever post about from first to last back in the day and just how people would just rip all over us. I'm not one of those bands that care. I, I actually like hater comments, you know? Um, they're always funny and, and interesting uh, sometimes. You know what I mean? I, if you don't I take it personally, hilarious. you can't take it personally. I think they're hilarious. I love them. I prefer bad comments over good ones. Um, People that talk about you the most are the ones that hate you. That's why it's I real. love it. I just, you know, I, I, like, I like the perception of someone <laughs> who's just going to go talk open shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's why we have ex girlfriends. Yeah, I you know I don't know. I respect you, even though you're bashing me in front of the whole yeah. world. Uh, you know what? Good on you. I don't know. Ex ex girlfriends are just publicists. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's real. Got Jeez. a lot of those, huh? 
A lot of publicists. I got some that's good too, that's too lie, real. That's, that's Yo, too real. Rest of my exes, y'all all y'all all are great people. Um, <laughs> that's a, dude. We were just doing the thank yous on on my uh, on the album for the Lowe's album, and I was like, the first thank you, like shout out all my exes. I'll see you. This, I'll see you soon. Like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that as like. Don't ever X. burn a bridge. Shout out X. No, burn that bridge. No, don't ever burn a bridge. You know, it's a, no, a, a burn, it. <laughs> burn it. Burn it because she's building it next time. That's true. Hey, yeah, that's that's real. So you that's guys, uh, I, you guys are associated slightly with Ghost Main, and Ghost Main has been known to take out you know bands within like the scene, like Trash Talk and a couple other acts that you know he's gone out on the road with. Would that be something that you guys would like to be a part of? You know, like one of those major arena type tours. I could see it. Uh, That'd be no, cool. I don't. We're never playing a fucking arena. Fuck that shit. I, That's I actually, stupid. When I, when I we hate my, money. When I signed and, my contract uh, in Infinite at first, it was only arenas. Yeah. No wonder you haven't played only, shows yet. We're only touring if it's with Ghost Man. So. Well, yeah, Furnace Ghost, Fast, Ghost, Ghost Main, Furnace Fast. No, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> Ghost Main, surprise. Uh, I can see it happening. There's no plans. No. I can honestly say that. Yeah, but, we're not. But, yeah, no, there's know. no. There's no. Hmm. Uh oh. Out for a song or two from the first EP. Um, little stuff like that'd be cool. Um, there's even there's even songs where like me and Zubin are like I'm taking. I'm playing bass, and I'm, I want. Are you gonna do that? It. Yeah, we're doing that on tour. I thought. Which song? Mm -hmm. Oh, I like this. Dude, just kind of. Maybe like... we should. Maybe that should be my test. And be like, do you know this song? Do you know this oh. fucking song? And we'd be like, like, okay, it. give me the bass. <laughs> That's <laughs> like a whole skit we do. It's a skit. Just interchange, unless he interchange his, instruments. Unless he has one, has one of his Fraser oh. vocals where he says slap bass, and I can't do that. <laughs> Zubin's probably the funniest person in the band. Zubin, yeah, I wish Zubin was in here. He's the funniest human I've ever met. I think that you need to do another one of these shows specifically for like a Zubin Ned combo. No, it's a crazy man. Just crazy man. Well, you know, I mean, like, we, I didn't want to have, as you can tell, because you guys are also in different locations, it's hard to talk without talking over somebody or trying to talk without talking over somebody. So, um, there's only I like it. <laughs> so uh, we learned that very early on, and oddly enough, we learned it doing Evergreen Terrace's podcast. They were like the second second band that we did, but I had all five of them on, and um, it was just complete chaos. So we didn't even we couldn't even use it because everyone was talking to each other within the actual podcast. So it was very very that's uh, confusing. hilarious. Yeah. Did, did, did uh, was it watchable at all? Yeah, for me. You know what I mean? It was, me. it was funny to me. You should just put it out. You should put it out. You know, we should, but I don't think, I, I don't know if the band wants it to be one of those. I bet there's <laughs> gems in there. Oh, dude. This was around the time uh, when the Tin Land Beasts thing was going on. And, Amazing. Yeah. So there, and uh, yeah, there, there's a lot of hot takes. I that's tight. That. I like yeah. that. Oh my God. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. That whole story was crazy. I just had um, I just had uh, JV. This will smack off the lead. Do you know about that story? No, but I, I was. Wait, wait, what story? You, you're like that's crazy. So I was like, this will smack off the lead. Oh, I'm I'm just faded. I'm not gonna lie. Um, yeah, so, you you tell him uh, the story Tim so Land, I can stay out of it. Okay, Tim Lambesis uh, put a hit out on his ex-wife. Okay, what she do? Yeah, well, I mean that's hilarious, but he actually did. <laughs> Yeah, no, he went to but jail. But did she for do it. something? No, just had his kid or something. I don't know. Like, just was alive. I think she was yes, like, you know, uh, maybe like a, a little. If you rough have a kid involved, like, if you have a kid involved, like, come on, like, I, I have know. a son. If anything happens to my baby mama, that reflects on me. So I have to you know, pick up the slack. And it's also just like, your, dude, your son like lost his mom. Like, that's fucked. Maybe we should have you reach out to Tim, and maybe you know, maybe you guys can be on some kind of like. Guidance. I heard. Mentorship. I heard while he Listen was, here, Tim Ward. I heard while he was in jail. Um, and I don't want to talk about him too much. It's just like you know, he has to know his life's a hot topic. One hundred percent. Like uh, he, what was it? He got married. 
No, no, they didn't give him his medication, his steroid medication or something. And he grew boobs? Mm, I did hear something about that. Mm. Does he uh, have an ass, too? No, only the boobs. What do you not anymore? Yeah. Not not anymore. He is he's out. Uh, he's been they they've toured. They've uh, you know Azalea Dying has done their thing since he's gotten out. And uh, no, oh, you're talking about the Azalea Dying dude. Yeah. Oh, uh, dude, I read this like one fake ass article where somebody like said that he like dug his way out of prison or some <laughs> shit. <laughs> that's how that's how he got his muscles back. Yeah, probably one arm, huh? No, nah, he definitely didn't dig his way out. He definitely, I think, did his time and got... I'm, like, I'm, way more flexed on, like, one arm than the other one. Even though I'm a stick, it's, well, like, why way is more flexed I think, on we, I think we know why. It's crazy he did his time already. I don't only fans. Yeah, it went, it went by quick. Invested. It went by quick. Yeah, it did. You know, for putting a hit on someone... We should get it as a like dying that, you know, it's... Yeah, is that something y'all will do? Years? Yeah, it's, it seems like it was less than five years, to be honest with you. I don't know. I I, I don't have the information in front of me, so I don't want to speak on it. <laughs> I don't even, you know, I don't know. That woman could be the worst ever. I don't really know the stories on it. From what I've seen in the metal community, everyone pretty much just says this about Ezra Dying. Leave Tim alone. He did his time. Yep. I mean, solid. yep. It is what it is. He did, his, he did his time. You can choose to like it or not, and then that, that you can like the music or enjoy uh, it or whatever. I love his music. I love it. I love it. I mean, Azalea Dying rips. I mean, yeah, yeah Azalea Dying's fucking sick. Yeah, they definitely no were. More Nick, uh, though, huh? No. I guess some some yeah, of the I'm members couldn't buff. hang. You know, they didn't want to be a part of it. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Hard times. Shout out P. Shout out PC Culture. <laughs> Yeah, Shout I, was out gonna, PC I was gonna say, uh, yeah, I think I was gonna make a joke about you guys getting canceled earlier, but you guys don't seem to care about it anyway. So, maybe they've tried. Yeah, yeah. So, do you? Uh, yeah. So like, what else? How do you deal with it? I mean, because you seem to be like an easy target to the internet, Lotus, and uh, you'll probably be a very easy target for the uh, Lamb Goat audience. I stand in the way is what happens, and I go, you don't. Well, you know what. Can. You, gotta go you know me. what is that? I actually am a very sweet, nice fucking dude. And I make sure that all my friends are taken care of at the end of the day. Whether we're partying, whether anything like that, I make sure that all my fucking, my fucking friends are fucking taken care of. Everybody, like, jokingly, I was like, I was saying, like, shout out to all my exes and all this bullshit. You know, it's like, you boil it all down, like, we're fucking entertainers. We're having fun. We're fucking being funny. We're being goofy. We're whatever. Don't take it so fucking seriously. Like, the people that are closest to me know that I would fucking give this shit off my fucking back or fucking jump in front of a fucking bullet for them. And that goes with, like, the people in my past because we have history. But it's just, like, you know, just have fun with the fucking art. Enjoy the art. As long as you're actually not a fucking piece of shit, like, you're fine. Like, joke. But if you're a piece of shit, you can't joke because it doesn't fucking translate. Right. Everybody knows you're a piece of shit. Yeah, it's, so, all, it's also I don't really very... take two things, to use, two things, like, like, super serious and i just stay me and be as on point as i can about that and take care of everybody because i know they would do the same for me and at some point or another i'm going to be fucking calling them outside the fucking road like oh my fucking moped got fucking hit by an 18 wheeler help me <laughs> like some yeah, stupid it's like you shit. understand like yeah you, know, you put out just be a good person be a good yeah. person fucking yeah. act a fool i think a you lot of people live, you don't live a fool and fucking be a bad person. You be a good person and you act the fool. That's right. have fun. Exactly. Yeah, and that's right. all that's all that we really are. We're just a bunch of fucking idiots having fucking fun, right? And the music that we want to listen to. We're not thinking about like who we're gonna tour with, who we need to this and that. We don't need a cosign. We don't need none of this. We make our money elsewhere. Like fucking this fool runs a fucking company, like a fucking business that makes fucking more money in a days. night than Yeah, more money a night than I would have fucking you know wished to get for a guarantee. You know, yeah. So hopefully, hopefully, so we'll like, be back open. Well, actually, yeah. I mean, <laughs> that, yeah. We are. It's coming back. But it's just like stuff like that. Ned gets paid on his his own shit. Suman gets paid on his own shit. Derek does his own fucking shit. Like it's like we we don't need this. We're just doing it. It's a passion project. It's fun. We love it. We. It's like our whole heart and soul poured into the shit and what we wish that people, the bands that we grew up listening to, were making today. And it kind of seems like they're all coming back around. Because it's like that whole 10 year cycle mm -hmm. and they're making, you know, like sick ass shit again. It's like, yeah, it's 
I guess like maybe I should just tour with my idol. I mean, that would be a me. good start, wouldn't like, it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Boo-hoo. I think a lot of it is a lot of people on the internet don't understand that artists or entertainers or people within the scene also do have to put out a certain kind of persona uh, because if you're kind of boring or, or lack, you know, enthusiasm in anything, no one's really going to mess with you or follow you and really care about your career. Yeah. So it's those who are more extravagant and more wild and get more, that get more eyeballs. And it's like, uh, it's like the guy, uh, Franz from Attila, you know, a lot of people think that that's him as an actual person. And it's like, or like Ronnie, Ronnie, yeah, Ronnie I, was yeah. texting, I was texting Ronnie today. Like me, like, and I was just like, dude, like, I felt like you're Ronnie's like one of my blueprints. Like I love Ronnie. Like we're not perfect. Fucking shit happens, but he's not a bad fucking person. So don't call him that. You know, it's like, I love that fool. Like, and then like fucking, what was it? Ollie had some shit. Or like all these other different like people like artists like had shit. And it's like you want to fucking rock star or acting like rock stars, but don't get sensitive about it. We're not doing anything actually wrong. You know, like we're just doing us. We're just having fun. We're making the music. And you love it. Like, let's do that. Yeah. So yeah. That might be a good spot to end it, guys. Right? We're gonna end it there. Okay, where do you want to end it? We've been going like okay. an hour. What else can we talk about? I don't know. I didn't. You had someone flashing the lights at you. I didn't know if you were getting called up to go to dinner or something. I don't know. It's eleven o'clock for you and I. I know it's a little. Oh no! It's I'm I'm almost forty years old. But when I come to my come to Georgia to see my family, I still live it. I go home to, for my family. You know, my mom and dad. <laughs> right, you know? right, right, right. And they're like, I mean, they're getting old. You know. They're I didn't know like, if you had someone. You know, like, hey, we gotta go watch a movie now. Come to movie <laughs> movie night. He said something. I couldn't. He's like, Damn. I kind of have like, to go. Oh, I, I, I kind of have to go because I'm posted up at the management office, and then um, I have some shit to do. Um, so if we do end it there, I'm down. Can you send me a MP3 of this before it gets posted or sent in? Like, yeah, I'll send it I to mean, the link. Just... I mean, yeah, we're gonna be. A, it'll be a little bit before it comes out. So I'll just cool. yeah, yeah, I just want to say just... the out. What was that? Can you edit every time I say the fucking out? I'm trying, dude. I can try to set the algorithm to do so, but I don't yeah. necessarily know. I don't even have an I'm algorithm. Just to do that. I'm just having fun with you guys. No, it's, it's been a great time. I'm good. It's been a great time. Yes, yeah, send it to me. Um, only thing I feel like I touched on anything personal was like towards the end. So like that's it. That's all I really want to hear. And then um, I'll like shoot an okay. We get we get if you want to like send the uh your phone number and we could start a group chat for it. Sure. For, All right, we'll do. Yeah. Cool. And uh I will Betty. see you in um Birmingham, guys. We'll see you there. I'll see you there. You'll see us before then. Oh well, I hope so. You may see us before then. Okay. Well, it's been great. Lotus, have a good time. Travis, you nice too, man. Thank you so I, much. I can't wait to see you guys. Good to meet you, dude. Later, man. Later. Later.